Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Jarecki, and I'm an Emdry approved consultant, basic trainer, advanced credit provider, and a member of the board of directors. I am also a member of the community of folks with a disability, as I am a person who is legally blind. And up until about two years ago, it never would have occurred to me to share that I'm a person who is legally blind when introducing myself. But as many of us have done over the past few years, I have been taking a look at how I interact with, interpret, and understand varieties of cultures and communities, including the ones that I belong to. And in my membership of the community of folks with a disability, one of the things that I discovered is that growing up in the 60s and 70s, I was consistently and clearly given the message that the more that I could do, like a quote, normal kid or normal adult, end quote, the more I was included, supported, and respected. So I spent a lot of my life working really hard to not be a person who is legally blind. But over the past couple of years, my journey has taken me to a very different place with this. One thing is that I now, whenever it's necessary and important um, or needed for me and or those around me, I share that I'm a person who is legally blind and talk about ways in which to make whatever I'm doing um, as accessible as possible. I've also done a tremendous amount of research into my own culture, and I've learned about things like ableism and what accessibility truly means. And I do things like this video to open up dialogue and learning. As far as my professional career goes, that too has had a change in location in its journey. One of the things um, that I do with clients and I encourage my consultees and training participants to do is to ask clients, what are the cultures and communities that they say that they are a member of and find out all we can about that. So in terms of a person who's in the community of folks with a disability, I'm gonna to wanna to know things like diagnosis. Um, what is their relationship to being a person with low hearing or how do they navigate in the world when they're a person with low vision? I also definitely do wanna know what are the not so good things that a person has experienced because I wanna bring EMDR to those experience for healing. But I also think it's important that we ask about the positives, the triumphs, the strengths, the good things that a client has experienced because of a membership in a community. So for example, for with me, um, I have met some great people. I've had some awesome experiences. I've learned a great deal and have come to really know my own strengths, lived experience and resiliency that I can not only give to myself but I can give to those around me. Another thing that I think uh, is important regarding positives is that we can use them as resources. So when preparing clients for, for EMDR or even during EMDR, um, using those strengths um, and those uh, uh, positive experiences in a resourceful way, not only in EMDR, but in their life in general. One of the many things that I love about EMDR is how accessible it is. And it's important that as EMDR clinicians, we know how to access all of its accessibility features, so to speak. So for example, knowing that you can send your negative and positive sheet to a clinic client via email in order for them to use voiceover if they have low vision or closed caption if they have low hearing. Knowing all of the ways in which we can bring dual attention uh, to our clients, whether it be uh, touch a tactile, whether it be auditory hearing, or whether it be visual. And things like a client doesn't have to say much in order to heal. And that's a wonderful feature for many people for confidentiality, but it's also especially helpful to folks who are nonverbal. And it's important that we as clinicians know how to ask the questions in such a way that brings that nonverbal accessibility to our clients. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you very much for watching these videos because that tells me that you too are on your own journey of learning and discovery. And for that, I thank you.